Some of my favorite projects involve training an AI how to play a game. I've done this for Flappy Bird, Chess, Pong, Checkers, but today I'm taking on Blackjack. Now this is an interesting game because we already know how to play it optimally, so I'm interested to see if the AI can learn the rules on its own. I'm not gonna hard code it, I'm gonna see if it can play enough games to figure out the optimal strategy and to even beat the casino. Now by no means am I encouraging gambling here, this is just a fun game and the math behind all these casino games has always been interesting to me. In this video, I'm gonna work on this project completely from scratch and I'm gonna bring you along for the ride. With that said, let's dive in. So first things first, I gotta figure out what to do. I know there's a bunch of different approaches, and right now I'm thinking that I could use something like NEAT, which is Neuroevolution of Augmented Topologies. I could try to build a neural network, or I could go for something like Reinforcement Learning. I'm gonna do a bit of research, consult the good old chat GPT, see what it tells me, and report back. So I've been doing a bit of research here. Let me share with you what I've found. So I asked ChatGPT, I want to train an AI how to play blackjack. What's the best way to do that? These are kind of the methods I know. It walked through a bunch of them. I'm not going to bore you with all the results, but pretty much what I was thinking is somewhat correct. We can use a neural network, but that's a little bit complex. And we're going to kind of mix that in with something known as cube learning. Now, if we go down here, cube learning is probably the most basic approach that we can use. And what this essentially means is we're going to generate a massive state table that has every single possible result or every single state that we could have in blackjack. Just like those really popular cards you see where it shows your card value or your hand total versus the dealer card and what kind of action you should take. So I asked ChatGPT explain a bit more about cube learning just so I could kind of refresh my memory on how it worked. And then I asked it to give me a bit of a visualization just so that I could show you guys and I could see for myself exactly what it was talking about. Here you can see that we have a pretty simple table where we have the sum of our hand, we have the dealer's up card, we have if we have a usable ace or not, and then we have the action that we'll take, which is hit or stand. I think I'm gonna start with just hit or stand. And then as we get a bit more complex, I'm gonna start adding in doubling, splitting, surrendering, and a lot of the other more advanced rules in blackjack. Now what's going to happen is we're going to initialize this table with all of these different states and we're going to assign them something known as a Q value. Now the Q value is the predicted result or the predicted outcome based on a specific action from the state before. So what we'll do is we'll say hit a 12 versus a 2. When we hit that, we'll either win or lose. Depending on the result, we'll update the Q value and we'll continue to do this millions upon millions of times. Eventually, once we've played enough hands of blackjack, the computer will start to figure out which combinations or which states should take what specific action. It'll do that by looking at the Q value. So later, we'll just have this massive table that will have all of the different combinations, all of the actions we can take, and the expected result for those actions. And we'll just pick the action, the results in the highest estimated Q value. Now this does involve a lot of iterations and that's actually why I need a pretty powerful computer for this project. Now fortunately, I teamed up with MSI for this video and they sent me over the Raider GE78HX13V, which is an absolute beast for my deep learning workflow. This laptop has a 13th gen i9 24 core processor, an RTX 4090, 32 gigabytes of RAM, and a 240 hertz 17 inch QHD display. Having this laptop feels like carrying around a mobile power horse where I can literally do anything I want with it. Even if I'm sitting in a coffee shop, I can load and train massive models using Nvidia's CUDA and this RTX 4090. Now being a power user, this is exactly what I need, something that gives me the confidence to know that no matter what my workflow is, it can handle it. In fact, pretty soon I'm actually going to be moving overseas and I can't bring my big desktop PC with me. Now at first I was a bit worried, but now that I have this laptop and it can fit right inside my backpack, I know that no matter where I am, I'll be able to handle any task and complete any project. Now that means that literally when I'm on a plane, I could be training a machine learning model and getting the same kind of productivity and work done that I would with my big PC. Now not to mention when I do eventually set this up in some sort of office, I can connect multiple monitors and any peripherals I need because of its HDMI 2.1, Thunderbolt 4, Ethernet, SD card reader, etc. I don't even have to bring dongles with me. Now, as I transition to a bit more of a nomadic life, this is exactly the type of machine I need, something where I have complete confidence in its 
its ability. It has all of the power I could ever want, and it means I can get any task done, editing, gaming, deep learning, doesn't matter, I have the machine that can do that. Now, if you guys wanna check out more, I'll leave some links in the description. This thing is insane, and it's got a ton of other features I didn't even touch on. So it's been about 30 minutes, and I realized that before I can actually start doing any training, I need to have a functioning game of blackjack. So I just built out a custom blackjack game here that allows you to play against the computer. We're gonna use this with our model to determine whether or not we're winning, losing, etc. And sorry, not model, I mean kind of our Q learning, Q table, whatever you wanna call it. Anyways, if you have a look here on the computer, I'll just quickly run through the code. You can see I just created a simple class so it'd be nice and reusable. I have all of the different symbols here. These are kind of the Unicode symbols for heart, spade, diamond, etc. just to make it look a bit better. We generate the deck randomly, deal the cards, start the game, and then we have some methods for figuring out the hand value. It's actually not that simple in blackjack because of the aces. We have a method for the player action, so hitting, staying, etc. Dealer action, getting the status of the game, so player bust, player blackjack, etc. We have the game result, and then we have a method for formatting the cards. Then just a bit of driver code here to actually run it. So I'll show you quickly what I have is that if I run the code here, it shows what the dealer has and what you have. For right now, it's just hit and stay, no doubling or splitting. So let's hit, I get a 15, they have a three, so I'm gonna stay. And the dealer hits and has three, 10, and a queen, and I win. Let's play that one more time. Uh, I have a three against a dealer three, I'm gonna stay, and they get 17 and we lose. That's usually how it goes. Anyways, I'll be back once I start implementing the Q learning. I am back, it's been about an hour and a half. I've messed around with a few different things here and I've got a somewhat working version here of the Q table. Now you can see that I've just tested this on 10,000 games and I trained the Q table on 50,000 games. Now of those 10,000 games from that 50,000 game kind of training sample, I have a win rate or number of wins, which is about 4,000, about 5,000 losses and 870 draws. Now that gives me about a 43% win rate. The reason why it's 43% is I'm just dividing it out of the total wins and losses and kind of avoiding the draws. Not sure if that's really how you should do the calculation, but that's what I've got. Now, if we have a look here, we can see that this is already making pretty reasonable choices based on blackjack basic strategy. Now, if it was perfect, this win rate should be closer to 48.5, 49%, depending on the rule set, but it should be higher than it is right now. So if we have a look at a few games here, we can see that the dealer is showing a six. We have a 10, we hit to 17. The dealer has 13, the dealer hits, and then we actually end up losing. Now, I don't show all of the cards the dealer has when they're hitting. I'm just trying to show the player decision here, or the AI decision. In this case, dealer shows an ace, we have a 13, we hit to 20, we stay. Unfortunately, the dealer has a blackjack and we lose. Now let's see, dealer has a five, we're showing a five, we decide to stay and we end up winning. I assume the dealer busted here or they had less, well, I guess they had to bust, right? Because we had a 15. Continuing, dealer shows a two, we have a 12. We actually decide to hit, which I thought was interesting and we bust and we lose. Now this one is where we're kind of making some mistakes, right? Dealer shows a two, we have a 14, we're hitting to 15. We have a 15, we're hitting again. We're on 17, we're hitting again, and we're getting 25. So obviously it's not perfect, and you can see that it does make some mistakes, especially on some of those lower cards, like two and three. So I'm gonna try to tweak this and see if it can get closer to basic strategy. So overall, pretty decent progress, and I almost argue this plays better blackjack than most average people. All right, so it's been about an hour and a half here. I've tried a bunch of different things, made some modifications to the code, and most notably, what I've done with the model is really increased the sample size and made it account for soft and hard hands. So previously, it didn't know the difference between a soft 16 or a hard 16 or whatever soft and hard hand, so it was making a lot of weird choices when we had aces. Now, I believe I've fixed that problem, but I think by doing that, I may have introduced some others. Now, really all that to say, after doing all of this work, I'm getting pretty much the exact same result. Kind of the story of my life when it comes to machine learning, change a bunch of things, mess with a bunch of parameters, and not being an absolute expert, I just get the same or worse result. I'm sure many of you can probably relate to that. 
Anyways, I'm getting again about a 43% win rate here, but this time it's on 5,000 games. That was the training uh, kind of data set. And then 1 million games is the testing data set for my wins, losses, and draws. Now keep in mind, I'm not accounting for the fact that blackjacks pay three to two. I don't have rules like double down, surrender, and split, which would increase the player odds. If I had those rules, I'd probably be doing a lot better, but also it would be many more hours that I'd be sitting here because the code is, well, much more complicated to write. Anyways, let's just have a look at a few kind of instances here of where the AI is making some mistakes and where it's doing good. So here you can see dealers showing a two. I have a 16, soft 16, hitting soft 16 to hard 16, and then hitting to 26. So in that instance, obviously that's making a mistake. It's correct to hit the soft 16, not correct to hit the hard 16. So I think again, some improvements could be made there. Now here, dealer has a three, we have a 10, hit to 13, and then hit again to 19. Now it works out in that instance, but that's not the correct play. So really what I've noticed is this has a bias to hit more than it should. Now I could easily fix that by hard coding a few basic strategy rules in here, but that's not what I wanna do, right? I want this to learn purely from reinforcement learning and from trial and error. So at this point, I'm not exactly sure how to proceed. What I will do is quickly show you the code and give you an idea of what I've been doing. And then maybe you guys can give me some suggestions in the comments down below and we can do a part two. Unfortunately, I don't have 10 more hours to sit here and mess around. Otherwise I would try to add those extra rules in and see how much of a difference that makes. So if we have a quick look at the code here, and by the way, I'll leave this available from the link in the description. You can see I have my main blackjack module, which is all of the code that we looked at before, which essentially simulates one hand of blackjack. Now we don't play with shoes, we use the same cards over and over, so it's like we're using a continuous shuffler machine and just every round we reshuffle the cards, which is different obviously than real blackjack where you can kind of count the cards and see what you're getting. Now inside of blackjack cue learning here, we start by initializing with three parameters. Now these are related to the cue learning. We have alpha, which is the learning rate, gamma, which is the discount factor, and epsilon, which is essentially the chance of choosing a random action. It's how much exploration we're gonna do. Now these three factors are really what make up the core equation for updating the values in the Q table. I'll see if I can put that on the screen for you guys right now so you can see what the equation is. It's a little bit complex, but pretty much alpha is telling us, okay, how quickly should we update values based on the result we just got? Now gamma is telling us how much we should consider future rewards and epsilon is our chance of kind of exploring or choosing a random choice. So rather than always choosing the choice that has the highest Q value, sometimes we pick a random choice so the model or the agent has some ability to explore and choose something that maybe hasn't been chosen before but could be the optimal solution. These three parameters uh, can actually have a huge impact on the model or on the agent. I have messed with them a bit, but obviously if you were able to find the right relationship here and mess with these a lot, then you'd be able to probably get a better model. Now, what we do after that is actually initialize the Q table, which is gonna have four dimensions. The first dimension is gonna represent the player sum, then we're gonna have whatever the dealer's up card is, and then we're gonna have uh, the usable ace. So if we have an ace that can be used for a soft hand, and then we're gonna have the action, which is either hit or stay. If we wanted to add the other decisions like double and split, again, that's a bit more complicated, but we'd have to change this last column to four. Next, we have a function that chooses the action using that epsilon variable. So you can pretty much see that we have a 10% chance here of randomly selecting hit or stay, whereas otherwise, we're just gonna see which one in the queue table currently has the most favorable possible reward or output. We then have update. This is what's actually updating the Q table. And you can see we have kind of that Q function here where we're taking the old value plus the alpha multiplied by the reward plus the gamma times the future max minus the old value. Again, a bit complex, you don't need to understand it. Then we have a function here, if I can scroll up, that tells us if we have a usable ace. We have a training function, and this is the main function where what we're doing is actually simulating the game. We're getting the result, so we're seeing if we won or if we lost, and then we're calling those update functions to actually update the queue table. Lastly, we have this play function here, and what this will do is actually use the queue table that we just trained up and has all those values inside of it to determine what choice we should make based on the card that we're given. So you can see that I was using play after I did all of the training, and we had that queue table in memory. I could store the queue table as well, that way I don't have to train every time I actually wanna play the game. So that's pretty much it. I wish I could spend some more time and improve this, but unfortunately I don't have more time to film right now. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below and how I could potentially improve this model. I think for a first shot, 
pretty decent. It's working fairly well and it gave me a chance to kind of refresh myself with Q-Learning and hopefully taught you a little bit about how that worked and gave you a realistic view of what it's like to work on a project. After all, that's kind of the goal of this video here, just to show you a bit of my process and the fact that I don't always get it right the first time. Many people see those finalized tutorials online and they think that's always what happens. I can't tell you how many times I fail, how many times I try to work on a project that just doesn't work and how many pieces of code essentially go in the garbage because I had no idea what I was doing, kind of like this. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.